Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide Let's look at Chapter 8 in the Study Guide, Muscles. Now this one deals with muscle physiology. You'll understand muscle anatomy in lab. Let's use skeletal muscle as an example of how muscles work. So over on page 8.6 in your study guide, we'll begin with how do skeletal muscles work. To understand that, let's refer to figure 8.3. Figure 8.3 is a schematic view of a skeletal muscle. We'll just refer to it as muscle. If you look inside muscle, you see visible threads, which you call fibers. Actually, these are fascicles. If you look inside the fascicle, you'll see microscopic threads. These are the actual fibers. Now, a muscle fiber is a muscle cell. In turn, the fibers are composed of fibrils. Fibrils are bundles of filaments. If we look once again at the whole muscle, the entire muscle is surrounded by a tough connective tissue covering called epimysium. Each fascicle, in turn, is surrounded by a tough connective tissue covering called perimysium. And the individual fibers are surrounded by endomysium. Now don't confuse the endomysium with the plasma membrane of the muscle cell. The endomysium is connective tissue. And in fact, all of these connective tissue layers blend together at the ends of the muscle, blend into the periosteum of the bone, and make a very firm attachment between muscle and bone. And we call the attachment tendons, muscle tendons. <clears throat> let's take the cell and let's enlarge it right here. Now this is a cross-section view, an elongated cross-section view of the cell. I've left out all of the details except those parts that are necessary to understand how muscles work. The muscle cell is surrounded by the plasma membrane. Muscles contain mitochondria. Remember, mitochondria generate energy. Periodically, the plasma membrane dips deep into the muscle cell in the form of a T-tubule. And on either side of the T-tubules are sacs. I prefer to call them lateral sacs. They're also called terminal cisterni. It's a type of endoplasmic reticulum. Unfortunately, before it was realized that a muscle fiber was a cell, the parts of the fiber were given its own name. For example, the plasma membrane was called the sarcolemma. Uh, the cytoplasm was called, called sarcoplasm, and the endoplasmic reticulum was called sarcoplasmic reticulum. For the time being, I'll use the terms you're familiar with. The next thing we want to do is take the fibril, remember this is a bundle of filaments, and let's enlarge the fibril with a longitudinal view. When we do that, it looks like this. Right away, the most obvious features are alternating dark and light bands. Now these have strange names. A light band is called an H zone. An A band is a dark band with the H zone in it. An I band is another clear or light zone between two of the dark bands. Now, before we go any further, these light and dark bands in the various fibrils of the muscle are aligned with one another as these fibrils and fibers are lying side by side and this is what gives the striations in skeletal and cardiac muscle. Finally, we need to take a look at the filament. If we look inside the fibril, we can see that there are essentially two types of filaments bigger ones called thick filaments and thinner ones called thin filaments. Now these thin filaments are attached to a 
vertical line. We call it the Z line or the Z disk. Keep in mind that this is a simplification, a schematic simplification of the structure of a muscle. Now the thick filaments are made of molecules of myosin. The thin filaments, on the other hand, are composed of three types of molecules. They contain actin, they contain troponin, and another molecule called tropomyosin. A section of the fibril between one Z line and the next Z line is a sarcomere. And the sarcomere is a very important idea. If we look back on page 8.6, we see that the muscle fiber is also composed of other filaments. For example, there are elastic filaments made of titan. It's a very elastic molecule that extends through the middle of the thick filaments. And then there are various other proteins, other molecules. There's one called dystrophin that links the actin to the plasma membrane of the muscle cell. So muscles are rather complicated.